Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to today's video. So today it would be a short one, or I hope it would be a short one. On today's video, we'll be tackling how you can represent your forces in terms of your components. That is your perpendicular or your vertical components. So we'll start off with that, okay? So let's say, for instance, you're given a force F. Let's give it a value of um, 300 newtons, all right? And angle to the horizontal, let's make it 300 degrees, right? So by looking at this diagram, we know that that will be our x-axis, that will be our y-axis. So our F, or our force of F, which has a magnitude of 300 newtons, is acting at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Now, when you talk of your components, we have our perpendicular components as well as our parallel components. So by that, we mean perpendicular to the plane, perpendicular to your x-axis, as well as parallel to your x-axis. Okay. So in this instance, we have our F as the force, and our components would be that and that, okay? But obviously, the components that we're now talking about would be in terms of your F, which is your given force or the magnitude of your force. And essentially, we need to represent it using the plane that we currently have, as well as any known or unknown forces that we may have, right? So for starters, it's important that we go back to basics. In order to solve this, we need to remember that we have our SOCATO, okay? And this essentially works in a setup where we have a triangle there, we have an angle that is enclosed on there, and we have, sorry, and essentially we have the x-axis on here and we have, we have the x-axis going that way and we have the y-axis going that way. And we could even label this. So since this is our hypotenuse side or the side where we have our force, we could just label it side F, right? Essentially, we are trying to represent this hypotenuse line in terms of a perpendicular and our parallel. So we'll have there and there. Right, and as you can see, this one on here essentially is represented by that because this is an imaginary triangle, it's not really there. Then our parallel one essentially is represented by that, right? So our parallel side will name it our x, our perpendicular side will name it our y, and those are the sides that we essentially use to try and represent our force F in terms of our angle theta, okay? So using our SOCATO, remembering that your sine theta would be your opposite over your hypotenuse. Your cos theta or your cosine theta would be your adjacent over your hypotenuse. Your tan of theta, which we won't really use much, but it's still there, it does not take away from the fact that it exists would be your opposite over your adjacent. Okay, I nearly messed it up there. All right, so now we essentially need to represent each in terms of the known values that we have on here. Our sine of theta when looking at our triangle, our opposite would be our y, our hypotenuse would be our force f, okay? Then when you look at your cosine theta, your adjacent would be your x, then your hypotenuse is your force F. If you're looking at your tan, same story. Your opposite would be your Y and your adjacent would be your X. Your tan of theta wouldn't be used in this instance because you would have two unknowns at the same point, which is not what we're dealing with here, right? Then, just going to minimize this a little bit. Essentially, we are trying to express our Y and our X in terms of our theta. So by cross multiplication, right, if you multiply your f by your sine of theta, you would make y the subject of your formula. So this means y can be expressed as your f sine of theta, and it means your x can be expressed as your f cos, oops, 
Messing it up. Messing it up. F cos of theta. Okay? And those are essentially the two that we need to pay most attention to, especially when we are now expressing our force in terms of our components. Why are we doing this? Because this is essentially the science behind the components that we are dealing with here. Right? So remember our imaginary triangle? We would have had an imaginary side y here and an imaginary side x here, which is essentially now the components. So our x would be here and we said it's our f cos of theta. Then our y is our f sin of theta. All right. Then when you need to represent your forces okay we can start with your y so if you need to represent your perpendicular forces you could say it's your f sine of theta but we already know the value of f it's our 300 sine and our theta has a value of 30 degrees you plug that into your calculator and you get 150 newtons Similarly, if you wanted to calculate the magnitude of your force in terms of x, you would do the same thing. So your parallel forces, F cos theta, we already know the value of the magnitude of F plus of 30, plug and play. And on here, I get 259.81 newtons, all right? So in an instance where you are asked to calculate the magnitude of your force, then that is essentially how you would go about it. Or if you're ever asked to express the components and calculate the magnitude of your perpendicular and your parallel, then that's essentially how you'd go about it. That would be your perpendicular, and that would be your parallel. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to let me know. I will tackle another example in the next video. Cheerio!